Welcome back clinical problem solvers. Have you ever wondered why you're five times more likely to find a clot in the left lower extremity compared to the right lower extremity? As I'm saying this, I'm realizing my EJ is quite prominent. Anyways, back to the video. In the next five minutes, we're gonna explain May-Turner syndrome, AKA iliac vein compression syndrome. And by understanding the normal anatomy of the vasculature, you'll realize why you're more likely to clot in the left lower extremity, and you'll understand May-Turner syndrome. Let's break down the vasculature. We have the IVC, the abdominal aorta, the iliac artery, the iliac veins. Remember, van, like driving a van from medial to lateral vein, then artery. In the majority of us, this left iliac vein goes under the right iliac artery in the majority of us. And the majority of us never develop iliac vein compression syndrome, which we'll discuss what that is. And we're asymptomatic, we are fine. But in a minority of us, 25%, we will have significant compression of this left iliac vein. Meaning, when they're looking at the imaging, it shows greater than 50% compression. But the majority of those folks are fine. Nothing happens. They never develop iliac vein compression syndrome. In a minority of them, they will develop iliac vein compression syndrome. So to summarize that, almost all of us have this anatomy. Left iliac vein under the right iliac artery. A minority, about 25% of us, have significant compression of that iliac vein, and then even a smaller subset of that go on to develop symptoms, known as iliac vein compression syndrome. By analogy, it's like patients who have fatty liver, a minority go on to develop biochemical evidence of inflammation of that liver, NASH, 25%, I believe, and a minority of those go on to develop cirrhosis. So, with that being said, who's that? Let's talk about what is the syndrome. So, for that, the minority that eventually developed the syndrome, think about it. If you're compressing the vein, what's going to happen? There's going to be really two possibilities. One is venous hypertension, and the other is DVT. The venous hypertension can manifest with sudden swelling of the leg and pain of the leg if it, the compression becomes too severe. And we have um, a beautiful cat down here that's distracting me right now named Sid. Or you can have venous stasis. But remember, the most common cause of venous stasis is not going to be May Turner syndrome. It's going to be venous valvular insufficiency as we age. On top of that, about 80%, I'm going to write this down, develop claudication. Go back and watch our video on venous, chronic venous insufficiency. When we talked about those patients, we said movement actually improved their swelling and pain because the muscles are contracting and pushing the blood upwards. But in this circumstance where you have venous hypertension, you can actually have claudication. So it can mimic arterial ischemia. So it can mimic arterial ischemia. So again, venous hypertension, acute pain and swelling, claudication, and then your symptoms of venous insufficiency, the edema, the skin changes, go back and look at that video. And then rarely it can cause a DVT. What's more likely to happen than it directly cause a DVT is that the patient has this anatomy, they're part of that 25% where they have more than 50% compression, then they have another insult, like a hypercoagulable disorder, or they're on a medication like an OCP. And that additional insult pushes them over to developing a clot. So now you know what the syndrome is. The DDX is whatever causes unilateral lower extremity edema. And we have a video and a schema for that. 
But if you think about it, a DVT that's not related to May Turner, because remember, most patients that have DVT do not have May Turner syndrome. It could be cellulitis, it could be venous stasis, it can be lymphedema. And the one bucket of disease processes that I want to mention is iliac compression vein, not because of the artery, but because the patient has a pelvic mass. They have uterine fibroids. They have retroperitoneal fibrosis. They have an osteophyte. So it's some kind of mechanical compression. How do you diagnose it? The way you diagnose it is probably a CTV, CT venogram or an MR venogram. But the best test is probably an intravascular ultrasound, an intravascular ultrasound. The treatment depends on how symptomatic they are and whether they have a clot or not. So if they don't have a clot and they have mild symptoms, you can do compression stockings. If they don't have a clot, so you have to distinguish, is it non-thrombotic May Turner syndrome or thrombotic? If it's non-thrombotic May Turner syndrome, but they actually have these symptoms of claudication or edema and swelling, then they should have angioplasty and stenting. Angioplasty and stenting. If they have a clot, then if they're a candidate, you should thrombolyse that clot and then do angioplasty and stenting. If they're not a candidate for thrombolysis, maybe mechanical thrombectomy and then angioplasty and stenting. Let's be honest, at the end of the day, you'll get IR involved and they'll give you recommendations. And the reason you wanna do this, if they truly have symptomatic May Turner syndrome, is because this will immediately give them relief and it reduces um, you know, long-term sequela. And the classic example is, uh, young uh, premenopausal woman who's on OCPs and develops you know, symptoms of venous hypertension or a clot. And the one pearl I wanna share with you is that the, if they have a clot, it can obscure this anatomy. So after you remove the clot, then maybe you'll be able to diagnose them with iliac compression, iliac vein compression syndrome. So to summarize here, the majority of us have this anatomy. A minority of us have significant compression of that iliac vein, and even less of us will have symptoms of venous hypertension, which include venous stasis, acute swelling and pain, and claudication, which is quite odd for some problem in the venous system. And less commonly, a clot. There is a DDX, look at our schema, but it's a DDX of unilateral lower extremity edema. And Oftentimes when you do have a clot with this anatomy, there's another insult that leads to that clot. So they are more vulnerable.